In today's macro anatomy, let's take a deeper dive in Chao Global Number Four Macro Rotation. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it with you. Just the thrill of it. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it. Hey yo guys, how's everybody doing? This is your guy Assassin Dave. Welcome back to another episode of Macro Anatomy. Today we got Global Number Four Chao. Mel J T Z Y. I'm gonna call him Mel J uh, for the reference of this video right here. Very excited for this gameplay. It's really, really hard to find those top global number one, global number two footages. You know, you gotta sit around and just wait a long period of time. And finally, I caught this guy. But before we get started, guys, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells so you can get daily uploads and join our daily giveaways on our live stream. And remember to re-download your Mobile Legends with the link in description to get your 20% extra diamonds when you purchase any Mobile Legends related items in game. So what you're waiting for, go ahead and download your Mobile Legends with the link down below. The same Mobile Legends, but extra diamonds. Speaking of global number four, the rotation already come down. You can see that he kind of cleared the bottom wave, dodged the stun, and rode to the team, hiding in the bush right off the bat. Chow, once again, very, very, very good at bush camping. In fact, I'm going to make a video about all the top global players have in common. You can see, already see a trend where all the top global players are really good at bush camping. You know, that's another common trait of them. A lot of people complain, oh, you're a bush camper. But in order to play Mobile Legends, you got to play your map. Play the map to your advantage. What is the biggest advantage? The biggest advantage in this game is advantage of unknown, right? Basically stuff that they cannot see. Where cannot enemies see you? Most of the time in the bush. Over here, I see some weird rotations of this child coming to the mid lane. They flickered out to safety for now, but I do think he's gonna die eventually. Got a kill. Uh, Fanny, yeah, Fanny gonna get a kill right here. So, interesting rotation coming from the bottom lane to mid lane, because obviously there is uh, many waves on the bottom side. I guess the team is calling for him to come mid, maybe. Other than that, I don't see like a solid reason to rotate towards mid, especially when, tur when Turtle's ready. Number one quality for Bush Campus, you have the wave clear priority, right? If you can clear wave ahead of your opponent, then you can move to a nearby bush or just rotate towards the mid lane or, or another other side of the map even if you choose to. So over here, I finally see Chao coming to the bottom lane, clear the wave. Um, he's gonna be, be taking the experience lane this game. You can see, oh, the team is rotating. So Chao instantly rotate to help the team. Very, very important because Chao's ultimate is really strong. Double dashes with the ultimate and a knockup afterwards. Uh, that's not a common thing you see top global Chao player do. Um, in fact, all the top global Chao player do. They do not use three dashes, uh, three skill one first. They actually use two part of it. And then use ultimate, and then finish off with another knockup um, from the third part of your knockup. So third part of your skill one, Chow. Okay, dodge the stun first, and then gonna go ahead and clear this wave. You can see the first item he's going for is actually Blade of Despair. Uh, going straight for the AD skilling, still for the AD means attack damage, straight for the physical damage skilling. I guess in Mobile Legends, <laughs> two one and four already starting off the game. Pretty ferocious game. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go ahead and take that gold plate right now. That's a lot of gold, right? I'm suspecting about like 100, 200 gold actually. I'm um, gonna go ahead and cut this wave. Another common scene that you see a top global player do when it goes silent. They're gonna actually, top players anywhere in the world, they're really good at cutting lane because this is gonna give them a few extra seconds for them to rotate without losing too much map pressure. Um, nice kick, walk back a little bit to extend the duration of the quad control. Standard child practices. Uh, we do not see too much flashy control yet. Well, it's mainly just been, you know, st pretty standard. But I guess that the, what we see the best is just the rotation, right? He's pretty agile around the map, try to pre put a lot of pressure. Now he's coming back to mid lane. In fact, it just makes you forget about who is the enemy side laner, right? Paquito has kind of forgotten about his lane. In fact, if you look at his experience, Chao's level 7, close to level 8, and this Pakuto's still level 4. So, I mean, they're just outclassing their opponents right now. In fact, right now he's level 8. Maybe Pakuto was have, having bad connection, having a bad day. I, I don't know. Ooh, the spot of that. Flicker auto attack, instantly killed a Selena. Didn't give him a chance to react. I like the reaction time right there from Mel J. 5 1 and 4 already. Only 5 minutes into the game. About 1 kill, 1 assist per minute. Insane. By the way, I, I gotta say, I absolutely love this Tesla tower. Uh, it does look really fancy. Incredible. Now he's just rotating to help team. Um, 
There's another really good uh, Chao player in North America called Ghost of Zero, and then when Zero plays Chao, he is more of a split push focus. This global number four Chao, he's a more team fight focus, right? You can see that he uh, cleared the bottom lane. He noticed that the enemy Poquito uh, never returned to lane, so he stayed in top lane. He stayed around the team just as much as Poquito did, but he already has a lot of advantage. He already have he's very far ahead, and he's just extending that lead forward. I mean, when you have a lot of advantage in Mobile Legends. I have talked about this before, it makes no re no sense if you just keep on farming, you know. You can team fight and then continue to pressure your opponent to make sure that they don't have any advantage. Um, because it's not about how much gold you have. Remember, it's all of, always, always about the gold difference, right? You know, how much gold advantage do you have, not just gold that you have. So, I don't think he's gonna recall here. Yeah. Because <clears throat> at around 60% HP, you rarely see top global player recall. In fact, he was just... Uh, BME in the bush because he's bored. Yeah, gonna go ahead and help Kagura through the blue buff. Warax, Blade of Despair. Uh, by the way, Warax is absolutely busted in the new meta. You know, you know, after the the, the Project Next comes out, this item is absolutely insane. Ooh, you know, not just him. Like his entire team has played it really well. So over here, the standard combo, do a little knock up. Put himself at 7, 1, and 4 right now. 5,800 gold. Again, I don't even know where Pokuto was the whole time. He's just been like staying lay, stay under the the freaking tower, not able to do anything. Every tower is Tesla Tower. Is there a Tesla Tower card? If you activate it, I mean your entire base become a Tesla. Does it even turn your turn your base crystal into a Tesla? Jeez. Yeah, tick. You see, once again, easy quad control. Chance to see right here. Whoo! Way too much damage at this point. Yeah, look at the damage. Oh, that might not be the best. <laughs> gonna feel like a double kill, but I think that's gonna be the end of the game. You know, way too far ahead of this kid. All right, guys, this game you can definitely learn a lot more from the early game. The late game is just a cluster slaughterhouse, to be honest. The early game where he was rooting towards the mid, kind of gave up his bottom lane uh, farm for a longest period of time. That's debatable, to be honest, because when you have a little bit of advantage in lane, you could have stressed that really take that forward. Um, and then, you know, create a lot more advantage by getting the gold played, picking the first tower. Uh, we did not see much of that. We mainly just see that uh, Mr. Chow just kind of took the advantage that he had and then, you know, really just rotated and continued the team fight. I mean, you can see at the end of the game, this guy has 7,600 gold and his opponent only have 3,800 gold. So uh, he doubled his opponent's farm. And then that's a huge difference right here, right? That's a huge difference right here. Yeah, I want to see how much damage he did. Uh, unfortunately, when I recorded this, I don't think I recorded that part. Big shout out to ML, uh, Mel J for the incredible Chow gameplay. 12, 2, and 6. Look at the item passing right here. It does go... A uh, blood despair, a uh, war axe, and I think he's going for endless battle. You can see the item right here, life steal, and it's another component of the endless battle. So yeah, I think definitely think he's going for endless battle right here. This guy had over 4,000 games of Chow, over 75% win rate. Definitely someone you can learn from. I highly recommend you go ahead and go follow some live streams, some top global players in the live stream section in your in your app, so you can get better as well. Um, I definitely learned a lot from the Chow players, and I think Chow mechanics something you have to practice. Uh, but it's not something you want to focus on in game. In, in game, you're going to focus on decision making and a rotation. So I uh, hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn the bell on, guys. With that, I look forward to see you guys in the next episode of Macro Anatomy. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I said they're signing off. See you guys next time. Bye now. Just for the thrill of it, nothing counterfeit with you.